You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Now, Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, a man called X. Did you know that every year, forest fires in the United States burn over an area equal in size to New England? Well, neither did Ken Thurston until Hubert Mitchell of the U.S. Forest Service came up from Washington last week and dropped in at the office of the Bureau. Mitchell was pretty upset. In view of that kind of a situation and the urgent need of conserving our natural resources, the government is deeply interested in seeing that this Oregon plant gets into operation. Mm. And the government has guaranteed part of his, the financial backing. Is that right, Mr. Mitchell? That's right, Mr. Thurston. The company that's actually building it is made up of about 60 small timber owners around the town of Tolosa. But, of course, they didn't have the money to swing a $5 million project, so... All right, Mr. Mitchell, we realize the importance of conservation, and it's unfortunate the construction of this sawmill and byproduct plant is running behind schedule. But, uh, where do we come in? Well, that's it, Chief. I don't know exactly. There have been an unusual number of delays on the job. And the contract carries a deadline, huh? Yes. The plant isn't in operation three months from now. It'll be sold at public auction. But I still don't see what we can do about Chief, it. Chief, I think there's a little beating around a bush going on here. Maybe a bush named Ray Brown. All right. Brown was our forest ranger in the Tolosa district. He'd been looking into some of the recent delays on the construction job, fires and so on. What did he find out? He wired me last week. Implied he'd come across some pretty startling information. He wanted an investigator sent out. So? So, before we had a chance to send a man, Brown was accidentally killed. Uh-uh. Found dead in his cabin. He'd apparently fallen asleep with a lighted cigarette, caught his mattress on fire, suffocated in the fumes. <laughs> Pretty careless trick for a forest ranger. It was careless of somebody. What do you mean? Mr. Thurston and I had known Ray Brown for years. He never smoked anything but a pipe. Hmm. Well, Chief? Well, Ken? I'll be calling you from Tulosa, Oregon. Yep, prettiest scenery this side of the pearly gates. Do you, do you, do you drive down to the junction every day? Nope, meet the train three days a week, Mr. Thurston. Run my store up in Tolosa the rest of the time. I see. Not many folks come in on airplanes like you did. They don't, eh? Nope, ain't in that big a hurry to get here. You ain't figuring on going into business here, are you? Oh, no, just gonna have a look at the new plant, that's all. Uh, be quite a sawmill if you ever get it done. Understand they've run into some trouble. Yeah, calamities, fires, acts of the almighty, first one thing and then another. Good thing you're not figuring on going in business, Mr. Thurston. Why so? Not enough business to go around. Ain't hardly enough for me. Well, what do you do? Do you close up your store when you go on these trips? Yeah, folks will come back. Shut it down another hour every day while I sort out the mail. Oh, you're the uh, postmaster, too? Oh, sure, I have been postmaster you know, well, about... Uh... Isn't that uh, smoke up ahead there? Yeah, Brush fire. Car parked there beside the road. Now, what in tarnation? Somebody's fighting it. Over there by the edge of the tree. That's Gene Fox. He sure can't do much over there. He's on the windward side of it. Lucky it ain't got much of a start yet. Come on, let's, let's give him a hand. Got some shovels here in the back. Here. All right, let's go. This way, Mr. Thurston. Over here, Gene. Let's hit it off here in the draw. Okay, coming over. All right, Mr. Thurston. Let's start working on it along here. Just fling dirt. That's all. Won't be... Too hard to stop. Another five minutes ago, and it'll have been in the trees. What's that? That line of poles back of the ridge there. Temporary power line. Supplies all the power for the construction work. I see. Hiya, Howard. We're driving past and seen the brush burning over here. Good thing you did. Mr. Thurston, and Mr. Fox. I Come do. on, Gene. Sling dirt. All right. Yeah. Yeah, some crazy fool threw a cigarette out of a car. I'd say somebody did a lot more than that. Huh? 
What do you mean? Surprised you didn't notice it, Mr. Fox. Over there, along the edge of the road, there was a strong smell of gasoline. Nothing like a brush fire to show a man he's got muscles he didn't even know about. Yeah. With a little more time to get started, it might have been a lot worse than a brush fire. Hmm. Figured you smell gasoline, eh? No doubt about it, Mr. Crumb. Just who is that uh, fellow Fox? Gene? Oh, he's the contractor that moves the log drive for the small owners upriver. Moves them where? About 20 miles down the river to the McDermott sawmill. Of course, if... Marty Hill ever gets the new plant started, all the timber will be handled right here. Mm. And that'll put Fox out of business. Yeah, reckon it will. He probably will get some kind of a job in the new plant. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like we got a hitchhiker waving to us up there. Yeah. Station wagon stop beside the road. Well, can't pass anybody up here in the woods. Uh, Bill McDermott. McDermott. The fella that owns that small sawmill down the river I just mentioned. Hiya, Bill. Afternoon, Howard. What might be the chance for a lift into town? Sure, climb in. This is Mr. Thurston and Mr. McDermott. Glad to know you. Uh, very glad you came by, Howard. I was beginning to think I'd be stuck there for the day. Oh, uh, Gene Fox is back down the road. Be along pretty soon. That's so? Well, uh, you can leave me at the garage when we get into town. What was wrong, Mr. McDermott? Motor trouble? Oh, no, just my own carelessness, Mr. Thurston. I simply ran out of gasoline. Well, here we are, Mr. Thurston. Thanks. Hmm, nice looking place. Best general store in Tolosa. The only one, as a matter of fact. Come on in. Looks like somebody waiting for you on the bench there in front. Must be an out-of-town. Everybody here knows this is my day to close up. How do you do? Oh, no. I assume you must be the proprietor of this thriving establishment? Yep, that's me. My good man, I'm here to save you not only from bankruptcy, but also from... Huh? Pagan Zellschmidt. Why, hello, Mr. Thurston. Oh. <laughs> I can see this is a very happy surprise for both of us, eh? You need new glasses. Huh? Mr. Crumb, this character goes by the name of Zellschmidt. Better lock the cash drawer. Howdy, Mr. Zellschmidt. Come on inside. Peg, I'm designed to have you turn up in Africa, Asia, or even Australia. But when you follow me to a place like Toulouse, Oregon, that's the last straw. But I didn't follow you, Mr. Thurston. I am now a member of the ancient and honorary profession of traveling salesman. Yeah? Selling what? The Ahmed Zellschmidt double-headed hatchet. The what? Sure. Cuts all, fells all, patent practically applied for. Look. Hmm. Funny looking act. Head on both ends of the handle. Uh, cuts with both ends. Every lumberjack in the woods will want one. All you do is swing it. Big on, you almost cut your head off. Uh, uh, Uncle Ahmed forgot to give me the instructions. Well, Mr. Crumb, thanks for the ride. Now I think I better look around for a room. The hotel's right next door. I'll show you, Mr. Thurston. I was going to check in there myself, only I didn't have any money. Uh, you uh, still don't. Oh. Mr. Crumb, you wouldn't want to buy a gross of this hatchet, would you? A dozen? Uh, one little sample, maybe? Oh, well, I didn't think you would. <clears throat> uh, here's your room key, Mr. Thurston. It's number 16. Best room in the house. Wait, don't tell me that you're the... Yep, I'm the hotel manager, too. Wow. Bye, Mr. Thurston. <laughs> Seem to work, Mr. Thurston. Hey, maybe it's the wrong room. No, no, no. It's number 16. Huh? Maybe we try to turn it the... Why come in? The door's unlocked. Hey, there's a girl inside, Mr. X. Yeah. Well, so there is. Hello. I'm Elaine. Come on in, Mr. Thurston. Thanks, Elaine. Boy, what a luscious little chipmunk. Um, Pagan. But, but, but. All right, I'm going. You don't have to hit around the bottom. I could be in the wrong room, of course. You're not. I knew you'd get number 16. Out-of-towners always do. Hmm. And why are you here? Oh, a couple of reasons. For one thing, I wanted to tell you not to believe everything you hear. I certainly believe any of it. 
What's the other reason? Let's say I just wanted to size you up. Oh? And what's the verdict? I think you might be pretty tough to handle, Mr. Thurston. Uh Uh-huh. We'll find out as things develop. You're not leaving? Oh, we'll have plenty of time. You know, only two people could have told you about me. McDermott or Gene Fox. Well, I know both of them rather well. William McDermott in particular, since he happens to be my father. And so, believe me, Mr. Thurston, we'll certainly cooperate with you Forest Service men in every way possible to get to the bottom of this thing. It's just about got me licked, and I'm willing to admit it. You're in full charge of the construction work? That the setup, Mr. Hill? That's right, and I'll probably run the plant if we ever get it finished. Well, the deadline's still three months away, Mr. <laughs> Hill. A few more of these accidents, and it might as well be three years. Suppose you don't finish, and the plant's sold at auction. Who'll be the most likely buyer? Oh, I'd say McDermott. Chances are he'd move the equipment down and set it up in connection with his own mill. The rest of us are in up to our necks already. What's your guess about these accidents, Mr. Hill? If we're still calling them accidents. Mr. Thurston, I'll give you all the help you want on this, but I'm not doing any guessing. A ranger by the name of Ray Brown made that mistake. Yeah, you may have something there. Do you happen to know a man named Gene Fox? Oh, sure. Fox is the contractor who takes the log drives down the river. Psst. Mr. Thurston. What's the matter, Pagan? A big animal or something's moving around out here in the dark. Maybe it's a bear. What of it? You've got your double-headed axe? Wrong time of the year for a bear to come down this far. Well, suppose we have a look. All right, Pagan. Where is this animal of yours? I think it was over that way. Or maybe this way. I get it all turned around in the country. Wait. Hear something? Yeah. Over to the left. Get down. Whoever it was must have beat it. Yeah. Rotten shooting. That light from the door made us perfect targets. Well... Mr. Thurston, I think they're coming back. Huh? Steps coming this way, all right. It's somebody in the path. Here now! What the tarnation's all this ruckus about? Well, it's Howard Crumb. Discharging weapons in the middle of the night. People hightail it down the path like they was crazy. Oh? Well, you saw somebody out there? Yeah, Bill McDermott. Running full speed. Didn't even stop to say howdy. Middle of the night, too. You're keeping pretty late hours yourself, Mr. Crumb. Even for the storekeeper, postmaster, and hotel manager. Just you never mind, Mr. Thurston. Got to get to the bottom of things. Got to know what's going on. Ain't nobody that's got a better right to know. After all, I'm the constable around here. to continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Pagan. Oh, come on, Pagan, wake up. Oh, why, of course, Queen Victoria. I'll be only too glad to be the president of the Bank of England. Oh, Pagan. And I will also... <coughs> What's the matter, Mr. Thurston? Nothing's the matter, except you've only got 20 minutes to get on the job. Well, in that case, I'd be better. Job? What job? The one I talked Marty Hill into giving you. He's the man in charge of building this new plant, remember? Mr. X, I, I don't feel so good this morning. I, I got pain. Hey, go on, get out of that bed and start moving. I want you to talk to the workmen on the job. Keep your ears open. Find out if they've got any ideas. About who's behind this dirty work? Huh? <laughs> it's Mr. McDermott. He's, he's the one who showed at us last night. Maybe, but if McDermott is, is in it, he's not in it alone. Then, to all we have is Howard Crumb's word that McDermott was even around. Oh. Mr. Thurston, when you fixed up this job, I, I hope you considered my outstanding capability, my numerous I talents. I took all that into consideration. Good. Uh, uh, assistant manager, maybe, at about $200 a week? Pagan, the job pays 90 cents an hour. Digging ditches. Hooray, then I'm... Oh, no! Quite a project. Yeah. 
Nice view of the whole job from here, Mr. Fox. Yeah, sure is. I come up here every day or so, <laughs> just to watch other people working. <laughs> Not uh, busy yourself right now, eh? Huh? Well, it's off-season for log drivers. And I guess it'll be a permanent off-season when Marty Hill gets the plant operating. A big part of the drive is a 20-mile stretch of river between here and McDermott's Mill. I suppose there'll be some good jobs in the new plant. Well, I got a little money saved up. I think I'll retire. Great retiring country up here, Mr. Thurston. Fishing, hunting, you know. Yeah, yes, I did some hunting myself last night. Any luck? Not yet. Morning, Mr. McDermott. Mr. Thurston, Jean. Hi, Bill. Understand you had a little shooting affair last night, Mr. Thurston. Yes, yes, that's right. You should have stuck around. What do you mean, stuck around? We might have had quite a discussion on night hunting. Silhouetted targets and so on. If you're thinking I was the one behind that gun, Mr. Thurston, you'd better do some more guessing. Oh, I thought maybe that was the same gun there on the seat beside you. I've been taking too many chances for too long. From now on, I'm protecting myself. I'd advise you to do the same. Good day. Mr. McDermott, I've never stopped doing exactly that. Yeah, I heard about that shooting last night, Mr. Thurston. You got any ideas? Better than that, Mr. Fox, I'm pretty sure who did it. We are. Hey, Mr. Thurston. Pagan? Not only I work my fingers to the bones, but now I gotta look all over the place for something nobody knows where it is. Have you seen Mr. Hill somewhere? No, Pagan. Matter of fact, I was just going to look for him myself. I reckon you'll find him at the scaling house over the other side of the ravine. Mm. Hey, you can walk across on the timber slide. It's not an operation yet. Thanks, Mr. Fox. What do you want to see Marty Hill about, Pagan? Everybody says since he's the boss that he's the only one that knows where it is. Well, what is? What the foreman sent me to look for, a left-handed shovel. Watch your step, Peg, on this slide. It's pretty steep along here. Ha! For me, Mr. X, it's nothing. Did I ever tell you about the time my Aunt Tallulah was a tightrope walker in the circus? Yeah, you told me. And you, she you, started you, you, to... You, you told me, also. Oh, I did? Hey, hey, what is this timber slide we're walking on? Looks like a wooden sidewalk up on stilts. When the plant starts up, the logs will come in at the far end back there, slide across the ravine on this wooden sidewalk, and go on into the plant. Oh. Now, what have you found out so far? Anything? Uh-huh. I'm very glad you asked that. There's one guy down there that claims he... Oh, you mean about this sawman? Oh, he was talking about a babe he used to know in Sioux City. Mm, great. That's a lot of help. Anyway, it was a very interesting thing. Uh, uh, he Pigo, said... Pigo, listen. Huh? Get over the edge there. Hang on to the brace underneath. Hurry up. Mr. Rex, what is it? Logs coming down this slide. Hang on. All right. So the timber slide's not in operation yet. Well... Come on, Pig, huh? That could have been a pretty close shave. <laughs> Nothing to it, Mr. X. We hear a noise, so we jump out of the way. Like the time my Uncle Ahmed was a bullfighter. Pig, huh? Take a look over the side of the trestle. Huh? 300 feet to the bottom of that ravine. Huh? Oh. Pig, huh? Fine time to faint. No, no, as a matter of fact, I was looking for you, Elaine, among other people. Really? How did you happen to know where I was? Oh, I saw you tie your horse over here in the trees. Knew we'd be around somewhere. Been hunting? No, riding. I brought the rifle along in case I ran across anything worth shooting. Anything or anyone? Meaning? That rifle's a little surprising. Judging by the empty cartridges I found, you used the pistol last night. Well, that's quite an interesting opinion. Oh, it's more than that, I'm sure of it. Who are you trying to kill, me or Marty Hill? See that little stump about 75 yards up there at the edge of the path? Oh, nice shooting, Elaine. If I ever shot at anyone, I'd hit them, Ken. You can bet on it. All right. So you meant it as a warning, then. Why? If I did anything like that, it might be because I like you. Maybe, but that's not the reason. I do like you, Ken, a whole lot. That makes it worse. Worse? Oh, Ken, I'm scared. Now, Elaine, I... Mr. Thurston, are you all right? I was. Uh-huh. 
I see what you mean. Mr. Schmidt. I've been looking for you for the last half hour, Mr. Thurston, all over this forest. Wish I'd known it, Pagan. I could have set a trap in the trail. Why aren't you working? Oh, I got fired. I see. How'd you manage it? I wasn't doing anything. That, I believe. I was only building a fire to cook some coffee. Trying to keep my body and soul together, you understand? Oh, sure. How should I know those little sticks I used marked the place for some kind of a railroad? Railroad? Uh-huh. Railroad, Pagan. You may have dug up the answer to the whole business. I did? Well, thank you, Mr. Thurston. Uh, what did I do? I think it'd be a pretty good idea if we stop beating around the bush, Mr. McDermott. I'm not trying to frame you for anything you're not guilty of. All I want is some information. All right, Mr. Thurston. What do you want to know? Anything you can tell me about the new railroad? There isn't one yet. Planned to build one over a year ago. Even surveyed the route. Then when this new plant came up, they decided to swing the route around and come in from the north. I see. I wonder if you'd mind marking that on this map, both routes, the old one and the new one. Sure, glad to. It uh, swings up through the canyon, then follows the river. Where do you plan to get timber after the new plant starts operating? Then uh, runs due south. Well, we've got plenty to keep going for years. There, hope you get this straightened out. I think I'm about to, Mr. McDermott. Thanks. And um, don't do any prowling up around to Losa tonight. This time the gun might be pointed the other way. So that seems to explain McDermott's angle in the thing pretty well, Mr. Crum. He's been playing detective all by himself. Well, could be, Mr. Thurston. Should have come to me, though. He's too hard-headed. And he knew that sooner or later he'd be suspected. That doesn't explain that daughter of his, you know. She doesn't need any explaining. Boy, what a dish. Mr. Crum, is Gene Fox one of the timber owners? No, he used to be. Sold out a year or so ago. Guess Gene's retired, you might say. Don't do much of anything. <laughs> it's got the right idea. How about you, Mr. Crum? Do you own any timber land around here? Well, a little piece here and there. Nothing to speak of. Well, even a small track might be a lot of trouble for a man with as many jobs as you've got. I don't run them myself, Mr. Thurston. Got them leased out. I see. Well, the way things stand now, all I need is one more answer. Got any idea where to get it? I think so, at the plant construction office. Uh, I guess nobody's over there this time of night. Oh, Marty Hill's probably there. He works pretty late. Suppose we go over and find out. Well, I don't know. I, I got a lot of things to do. What things, Mr. Crum? The store's closed, post office closed. Nobody wants a hotel room. Well, I, uh, I ought to do some work on the book. They'll keep. Come on, Mr. Crum. Let's go look for that last answer. I don't think anybody's here, Mr. Thurston. No sign of life. Well, the light's on, though. Come on. We going inside, Mr. Thurston? Any reason why not, Mr. Crumb? Good evening. Mr. Thurston. Ken. Didn't know you had company, Mr. Hill. How are you, Elaine? Well, she... I was just passing by, Ken. Stopped in to say hello. You stopped in for the same reason you've been hanging around here for days. Plain detective. Same as your father has. But I thought father Relax, was... Elaine. He's not involved in this. I got a map here, Mr. Hill. I'd like to ask you a question about it. Well, if it's anything about the construction here, maybe I can answer it. You'll notice two lines marked there. The proposed routes for the new railroad. The old plan and the new one. Uh... Yeah, that's right. If your plant here fails and is sold at auction, McDermott will probably buy the equipment and set it up downriver. Chances are, in that case, the railroad will be built on the old route. No doubt about that, Mr. Thurston, but uh, what are you getting at? Most of both lines are on public land, but one seven-mile stretch of the old route crosses a private tract. A seven-mile right-of-way might bring the landowner a pretty good price. But can... Oh, Nothing. One of you could tell me who owns that tract, Mr. Hill. You own that yourself, don't you, Marty? Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I do. It's too bad you found out. Look out, Mr. Thurston. He's grabbing an axe. All right, Hill. Drop it. Oh, my arm! I said drop it. <clears throat> I'd have killed you. Like you did Ray Brown, eh? All right, Constable Crumb, take over. Glad to, Mr. Thurston. He'll get life. Sure as shoot. You sound pretty sure of that. Don't know why not. After all, I'm the judge. Come on, Marty. 
It's a good thing for him he didn't have one of Uncle Ahmed's double-headed hatchets. He would have killed himself. Pagan, that's exactly what he did. Huh? Anytime somebody starts out to cheat the people who trust him, he's picking up a double-headed axe. And while he's cutting out a profit for himself with one end, he'll cut his own throat with the other. There's no way he can keep from it. Because there are two things put together exactly alike. A double-headed axe and a double cross. Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Let me remind you of something. That everybody benefits when everybody gives to the community fund. Make your contribution now and make it generous. The money you give comes right back to you because the community fund helps make your hometown a better town for you and for everybody in it. Now, thanks for listening, and I'm sure you'll want to hear next week's story called No Greater Evil. For it's packed with suspense and thrill, so I think you'll enjoy it. As usual, Leon Belasco will be along as Pagon Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. Frigidaire's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Les Crutchfield. And so until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigid Air, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. Remember every Thursday, for the best in entertainment, tune in and stay tuned in to CBS, the biggest show in town. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.